858 here, Big 550 KTRS. We'll talk about Cardinal baseball a little bit later on. Also, Alex Stone is going to join us over the uh, Trumpageddon that is going on right now with him tweeting about all sorts of things that have absolutely nothing about him being the leader of the free world. Right now, though, we need to talk a little technology because... Well, we need to leave the planet as soon as one of them win the election, and Larry Sonnebeck's going to help us do that. Good morning, Larry. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you? All right. What well, are you holding it, in your it, hand there? It might be Trumpageddon in politics world, but it's actually Armageddon for BlackBerry. Oh, so finally, no. if you guys remember, there used to be a company called BlackBerry that yes. made smartphones. They actually made some of the world's first smartphones. Actually, back in 2002, if you can believe it, they released the, the, their first BlackBerry that had email, mobile web browsing, and a full keyboard that you could I actually type on it. And so many people loved it, they called it Crackberry. They yeah. did. They were addicted yeah. to it, especially if you went to Washington, D.C. or any place that you know where they were using a lot of government phones. They were all addicted to these things. Right. This, wait, hold on. Is that, is that your Blackberry? This, well, this is an old, the, the, the oh, most well. recent Blackberry I could find. It's been sitting in a drawer for probably four years, which is the main problem and the why they, they've officially said we're not making phones but, anymore. But you told us off, off the air, what, what was the downfall of Blackberry? Well, Blackberry had a lot of problems. But one, of the, one of the main things, they had two CEOs. So they had two heads trying to drive the same train if you will right and they could never agree on things and beyond that they had about they had, had all the market share for smartphones they basically owned the whole world's market share 80 90 percent and this is back in 2002 2003 and then they decide not to do anything so then they have five years until the iphone one is announced in 2007 they see you know the market changing the needs changing and they say we're not going to do anything we refuse and so because they couldn't agree, they ended up doing nothing, yeah. and, and they rested on their laurels. And the iPhone just you were That's in. right. You did get your emails. It was the first yep. one to get your yeah. emails and all of that, that stuff. And mm -hmm. iPhone came along and just... You know, so now they're officially over. They said, we're not making any more phones at all, ever. Is they, the company going under? They, they still technically have a couple software things that people like, so they're sticking around for those. Right. But that's what they should have done years ago. Mm -hmm. People liked their mail service. People liked some of the security things that they had. Right. They should have just taken those to iPhone and Android back, you know, I 10 years ago. Didn't somebody buy BlackBerry or try to? Uh, well, I mean, uh, Research in Motion owns them, which is RIM. Right. Um, but um, since then, there have been a couple people trying to, because right. there's a lot of rumors, because they have a lot of patents. Yeah. Because uh, Nokia was purchased by... Microsoft, uh, Microsoft. Yeah. and then that was a I mean that was a dud I don't know what you're buying they, Nokia for I think they uh, they've essentially yeah. dissolved that division now Nokia already. called uh, they want their Blackberry uh, back 2002 uh, called they want their Blackberry they, Nokia had the same sort of problem they yeah. refused to change so uh, all right uh, moving, R.I.P. Blackberry yeah I know uh, moving right along uh, Snapchat uh, which I don't use, but I know a lot of the Well, that's because you're do. not as cool as the rest Appar of us. I am not. I, I grant it, grant it. They've I actually, use Snapface. They've so launched their own set of glasses, believe it or not, a wearable coming out this fall uh, that allow you to take video and Snapchats directly from the glasses frame, which those of you that have, have looked and heard about tech for a while might remind you immediately of Google Glass. Yes. I was going to ask you, and yes. that didn't go and, very and, far. Which, which has to make me think, like Snapchat's telling us that, oh, it's going to be cool and everyone's going to love it, and all I keep thinking of is how much people <laughs> well, hold on a second. hated it's, Google Glass. Snapchat is coming out with glasses. They are. With video capabilities? Video and, uh, of course, Snapchatting capabilities. I have, a, I have a question. I have a question. Yes. Why can't police just wear those as opposed to a million-dollar body camera that they're going to wear? Uh, you know, I, I don't know, and beyond that, most of the body cameras don't cost a million dollars okay well but they they cost a lot more than the snap face cam pictures yeah this 130 dollar uh pair right. of glasses yeah um, they're kind of uh they're kind of hipster are, doofus they, they look yeah. kind of doofusy i would agree <laughs> <laughs> they're flowery they're kind of weird looking I they're mean, perfect for me i will say the one thing I, I guess people thought you could hide record stuff with google glass even though that seems ridiculous right but somehow i guess these flowery glasses are going to a little stand out uh, a little more. these millennials are being sold a bunch of nothing working. uh you know i don't think no. they're going to go over well either no. but uh you know we'll wait and see when are they gonna when are they out uh this fall they're going to be out for 130 dollars 130 dollars mm. did you see hbo real sports this this week i haven't no so uh they did a, a story on major league baseball and the strike zone and there is a company that when you watch a baseball game on tv they have the box mm -hmm. and they show you where the ball is yeah. okay so real sports went to a yale professor and said track every pitch for the last five years and how many pitches are in the strike zone that the umpire calls wrong? Mm, okay. Right? Okay. And they did this study, and they came back, and they found out that 
85% accuracy in balls and strikes. That's very good. Oh. Yeah. That's that very is. good. I think that's really bad. Oh, you think it is? No, I it? mean, for, for, I don't know. Well, 15% I guess, wrong? I guess it should be more like 95%. Oh, well, it should be, yeah, it should uh, be like never get it wrong almost. Know, that's really close to the strike line. For a human, subjective. you know. They also did a, they also found out that the, there is a home field advantage when it comes to umpires that they give the home team a break like 15 times to three. Right, so it's oh, st- statistically significant. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, and so there's this argument that they that they want to go towards just having the computer call the balls and strikes. I knew that was coming. Mm. Like and the umpire. Replaced. So they did in this in this in this story on Real Sports on HBO. They had a guy tell the umpire behind the plate, ball or strike, and the umpire's like, ball strike. Oh. Meanwhile, the computer's telling the guy, and the guy's re- re- relaying it to the umpire. You know, for really? so long, it seemed like baseball was the only holdout for technology, and they were all you know, about the human element, and yeah. now it seems like they're very fast going the opposite direction. It was really very really interesting. interesting. But Major League Baseball has, has the technology in all the parks, and you can look and watch it on television. You can watch it on your smartphone, but the umpire still has the discretion to call the ball or strike any way he wants. Interesting. Yeah, that is. Check it out. Larry, with uh, First Rule, always a pleasure. Thanks, my, my, my friend. Have a good weekend. Thanks, guys. 858, Big 550, KTRS. Let's